Barcelona have been defeated by PSG 4-1 in the second leg and globally Barcelona have lost to PSG 4-6. To be honest, I don't know what to say and the reason why I am saying that is because I did not know that Barcelona were going to go into the second leg playing with a total of 10 men, right? We lost a player. Arujo was, he received a red card very early in the game. And I knew that when Barcelona had to play with 10 men for, for, for a span of 70 to 75 minutes, I knew that Barcelona are going to be suffering. I knew that because in the beginning of the game, I saw PSG dominate the possession. And we talked about how, you know, like this is going to be expected. PSG do know how to maintain possession. They know how to pass the ball around. Barcelona, based off the players that they do have, they're going to have to play a very defensive game because we had Pedri, Gundogan, and Frankie in the midfield. We did not have a pivot in this game. And so that was the game plan. And we were okay with it because the whole point of that game plan was for us to defend well, right? To zonal marking. And then once we do receive the ball, we go on, we go on in, the, in the counter and we use our players to, you know, progress play on the wings, whether it's through La Minimal or Rafinha. So we saw that game plan play out in the first 20 minutes. PSG had the majority of the possession and then eventually Barcelona got the first goal with La Minimal dribbling through players, having an amazing run. He passes it to Rafinha. Rafinha taps in the the ball and then it was 1-0 and I'm like this is exactly what Barcelona should be doing we all thought that this was going to be Barcelona's game. And so everything was going well. Like I, when I saw PSG have the, the majority of the possession in the first 15 to 20 minutes, it, it I wasn't really scared. I wasn't really nervous because I knew what Xavi Hernandez was doing. And so it was 1-0. And I'm like, okay, great. Barcelona know exactly how to punish PSG. This is going to be a game where we can win 2-0, 3-0, maybe even 4-0 because of the fans, right? The atmosphere, the, the environment, everything at the stadium was amazing. And I want to thank the fans for being there and supporting Barcelona fully now that we are going to go into the last 70 minutes the first before i even get into that the first thing i do want to say to everybody here is welcome to the channel thank you guys for tuning in if you guys are psg fans real madrid fans bienvenido welcome i know exactly the type of comments i'm going to be getting on this channel i know what people are going to be saying they're going to be saying hi kevin i told you you see barcelona's weak whatever whatever and now you know we're in a situation where barcelona do have to they have to bite the dirt they have to right it's just they have to because everybody wanted for barcelona to fail and i'm going to assume that many Barcelona fans here in the comment sections are also going to be turning their backs on Barcelona. So you know what? Like before I even talk about those last 70 minutes, I just want to say one thing. I am proud of these Barcelona players. I think that what they did was amazing. I know that we have conceded like three goals after we went down by one man, but to me, it does not matter. And I say that because I think that Barcelona did what they could based off the utilities and the tools that they had. Like what else do you expect from a team that was only playing with 10 men, right? What else do you expect? Of course, PSG we're going to end up scoring a lot of goals because first of all, they had the majority of the possession. We couldn't, right? We talked about that before. And not only that, not only did they have the majority of the possession, but also Barcelona were playing down, but were, were playing with 10 men. And which meant that PSG always had one player available. Always, right? He was always free. And so, you know, like I know that it does seem like a horrible result, which it is, but I just don't think that this scoreline should be the reason why we should say this Barcelona team is trash. This scoreline should, should not be the reason why we should say Xavi Hernandez needs to leave. I have said it before, before this game even started. I said it to everybody here, whether PSG turn the game around and they go into the semifinals or not, it does not matter. I do not care about the end result because at the end of the day, no matter what happened, whether we won or we lost, Xavi Hernandez needs to continue. And the way that I saw these Barcelona players play their heart out, the amount of chances that I saw Barcelona create with 10 men, with 10 freaking men was amazing. Yes, you can come and aim at me and say, Kevin, just stop being so 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 over positive and and it's all delusion whatever whatever i promise you bro i promise you it's not delusion i promise you that delusion is saying that, oh yeah cummins barcelona was amazing and we deserve to win against psg uh, uh, back in 2021 because we had messi because we had griezmann and because we had dembele that's called delusion but here this game i saw psg suffering right and now since we are talking about the last 70 minutes with 10 men i saw psg suffering a lot with barcelona only having 10 many of you guys are going to come here with an agenda many of Madrid fans, PSG fans, fake Barcelona fans are going to come here with an agenda and say PSG had a, a, a easy game, Kevin. Easy game. They did not. They did not suffer whatsoever when Barcelona ha only had ten men. I call that false, bro. And you can argue with me all you want, but nah, I'm sorry. Like I, the, the amount of chances that Barcelona had with only ten men, I continue to say that with only ten men, I'm, I'm just like, dude. Like the game was there, and the amount of times we pressured PSG's defensive line to the point where they made a misplaced pass or they lost the ball. It was so many times. I'm like, dude, the game was 
there. We just needed that one player. We needed that one player. And again, I applaud these players. I'm proud of them. And I don't think that because of this, it should be demolished. I don't think that we should be starting all over, right? We we should not be starting our sporting project all over. It should not happen. I think that we need to, we need to go into this summer. We need to convince Xavi. We need to go on and at least finish second place in La Liga. And we continue to strengthen ourselves in this summer. Because to me, I know that many are going to be saying, but Kevin, we got worse because we did not win any trophies. And the last season, we only won, we, we won two, but here we won zero. I know that it seems like, yes, we did bad from like, you know, from a headline point of view. If you just read the headline, yes, it seems like Barcelona did bad. But if you understand the context and the details of why and it, it ended up happening for us like this, like, like in this way, you understand why we should continue after this season with Xavi Hernandez. This should not be a loss, a loss for us to be like, oh my God, it's over. We're weak. But we, we might as well not even go into the Champions League next season. No, I see a very competitive Barcelona, a very competitive and a very mentally strong Barcelona, a Barcelona that's just missing about two players. And that's it. I refuse to say that Barcelona should be restarting their sporting project because Araujo decided to commit to a foul that ended up being a red card. Like whether, you know, for Ronald Araujo, I understand that, you know, he's a great, great defender. I understand that he is somebody who is very reliable, a leader, right? Mentally very strong. But I'm also going to admit to everybody here, Araujo, you know, what he did to the player was a mistake. He did not need to put his his hand over the guy's face or whatever. And that should have never been a red card. He overcommitted. He got nervous. And that should have never happened. Because I think that with that decision being made, it, it is what ultimately led towards Barcelona really, really trying to push for that to the win. But it, it ended up backfiring to them. And again, like Barcelona had the game in their hands. They really did. But with Araujo going down, the one that was supposed to defend killing Mbappe with Koundé, he went out and he overcommitted. And to me, that was a mistake for Araujo. I expect for an, an apology coming from Araujo. I'm not going to say that this guy needs to get out just only because of this decision. No, you know, players make mistakes, but this is the reason why Barcelona had to suffer so much in this game and why we we did not blow a, a 3-2 lead. We did not blow any type of lead, right? It was only a one goal difference, but it's just, I don't know, man. Like, like I've said, I'm going to admit that yes, Arujo made a mistake, but since we're going to be doing that, I also believe, right, that there was also this play that happened with Gundogan, and he was fouled by one of the players inside the box. UEFA did not do anything, right? The, in other words, the ref did not do anything. They said that this is not a foul, even though they tripped Gundogan. So I'm like, okay, yes, you're right. Like what Arujo did was wrong, but also give me this foul. Why not give us that penalty here? Why? And so from there, like, you know, everything was just getting very annoying because Barcelona were trying their very hardest. And at the same time, the ref was giving out yellow cards here and there. It even got to a point where Xavi Hernandez had to get a red card because he was like, dude, are you you kidding me like he was mad because of the way that frankie was pressuring one of the players he regained the ball and then it led towards a foul that frankie de Jong did and travi hernandez was furious he's like dude are you kidding me you really think that's a foul are you serious and so he ended up kicking like one of the boards or something like that and i saw like the the guy that was right next to him he was like he was like pointing at Chavi. He's like hey look look pay attention to Chavi. look at him look at him look at how he's kicking and look how he's overreacting kick him out he needs to be out and so there you go like right like that is uefa that is the refs slowly trying to dismantle barcelona in whatever way that they can all of these things that happen in the game could have been prevented if Barcelona never got the red card. And I find it so funny that there are so many headlines going out right now that says Barcelona collapsed against PSG. And there's nothing that, nothing collapsed, dude. Nothing. Like if you understand the details, you understand why Barcelona collapsed. It's because we were down by one man. That's basically it. But we did not collapse and like blew a 4-1 lead or something like that with 11 men. That did not happen. We ended up going down with a 3-2 lead playing with 10 men. And so I can already see the media trying to paint a bad picture for Barcelona. I already see that. And once even worse is that the Barcelona fans here, they're not going to be helping. They're not, they're, people are just going to be saying, I'm done supporting Barcelona. I'm not watching Barcelona for the next two months. I don't even care what happens in La, in La Liga. You see how like things do accumulate. You see how things just automatically so easily go up, go up against Barcelona outside of the pitch. You see how bad it does get for this club. You see why it's so hard for this club to succeed. So many Barcelona fans just like that, right? Just like this, like this, turn their back on Barcelona after witnessing a, a bad result. But you don't want to look at the bigger picture. You don't, you don't want to actually see what Xavi Hernandez is building. I know that it's really hard for people to say that right now because of how we lost, but anybody with a football brain will understand what I'm saying here. And to me, like the way that, like I saw Kubarsi, dude. I saw Kubarsi defend defend Mbappe so well. I saw Koundé defend many players so well. I saw Cancelo defend his ass off on the field against ha Hakimi or sometimes Dembele. It's insane. And so it's crazy how football works, right? Because, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to put out any hate, but you know, I saw Dembele out there. He was enjoying himself. He was trying so hard to score. He was trying to be so decisive and I'm just just like, dude, where, where was all this when, when you were at Barcelona? Where was this, right? You you scored the goals, you, you did whatever you had to do, you got subbed out, and you were laughing. 
You were laughing on the sidelines, enjoying yourself. So happy to put down Barcelona. I have no idea why you would put out such an attitude like this because the only reason why you're in this form and the reason why so many, so many people think that you're good is because of Barcelona, is because of Xavi Hernandez. So show some respect. And so overall, congratulations to PSG for coming back against Barcelona. You guys played well with Luis Enrique. You know, Luis Enrique is a great coach. Again, congr congratulations. You guys were able to finally defeat a 10-man Barcelona. And that's good. I'm proud of you guys. I hope you guys do succeed in, in whatever whatever ways you guys can through the next couple of games in the, in the Champions League and we'll probably see each other again soon next year and I can't wait for that. That is going to be wrapping up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.